Joining me now, Dr. Melinda Webster and Dr. Anna Gold, and thank you so much. And first, Melinda, I want to mention that you are a sea ice geophysicist with the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and Dr. Gold, uh, Outreach and Education Director at Ceres. Let's begin first talking about Mosaic. Why don't we start with you, Dr. Gold, and tell us what's happening. Yeah. Uh, Mosaic is an Arctic expedition. There is um, the acronym stands for Multidisciplinary Drifting Observatory of the Study of the Arctic Climate, which means there's a central observatory, which is a ship, an icebreaker that's frozen in the Arctic Ocean that happened in September at the sea ice minimum. And it's uh, drifting with the transpolar drift and collecting. And there's scientists over the course of the year, there's up to 600 scientists involved in this expedition. And they cycle in and out with different icebreakers or f uh, fixed wing airplanes uh, throughout the year. And they're collecting data on the Arctic climate through an entire season. I know you've been on the expedition and you will be going on it. Um, and as a geophysicist, why don't you talk about the science behind these expeditions? Yeah, this is a really exciting opportunity for the science because it's not just a snapshot of capturing what's happening in the atmosphere, or the sea ice, or the ocean. We're staying there for an entire year, seeing how this uh, season cycle through throughout the year. And we're gonna be taking measurements of the ice, of the ocean, of the atmosphere, of the marine ecosystem. All these are intimately linked together. So when one thing's changing, like the ice moves, it affects everything else. It's a cascading effect. So this is a pretty huge effort. There are over 600 scientists involved in this. And it's really gonna revamp our understanding of climate change and the changes that are going on in the new Arctic. What challenges did you face? And then I'm gonna ask you what challenges scientists face, but what did you face when you were on that expedition? So I was on the first leg of the expedition where actually two icebreakers went out together, this drifting observatory, um, polar stern going up. It's an AVI-led expedition, but it's heavily funded by the National Science Foundation and uh, the Department of Energy and NASA and NOAA from the US, funded for the US contributions. But so we went out and I was on the Russian icebreaker that uh, supplied and helped with the setup. And one of the big challenges for this initial leg was finding the correct ice flow. So we went, we left, uh, Tromsø in northern Norway and went out into the ocean and were looking for sea ice, something, an ice flow that's thick enough to be um, having all these uh, networks of stations that I'd set up on the ice, around the ice, uh, this, uh, around the icebreaker. And uh, the ice is very thin, uh, thinner than it has been in the previous years. And so it was a challenge to find the right ice flow at the right location where the transpolar drift would actually uh, not spit out the ship too early and would really allow for a drift for an entire year. Wow, so knowing this and knowing what's ahead during your expedition, what challenges do you face as a scientist? Yeah, there are a lot of challenges that we face. Uh, the ice is a very dynamic medium, so it moves around with the wind and ocean currents, which also means that it breaks, it cracks, and things move around a lot. So how the instruments are distributed on the ground or on the sea ice are going to change. They've already changed. There was a big storm that happened in November, and it shifted the ice camp and split it apart and it shifted it by 300 to 500 meters. And that's pretty important when it shears um, cables that are supplying energy to our instrumentation. So we have to be adaptable. We have to learn to adapt mm -hmm. our plans and be ready for that, which is challenging, but it's possible. So what is the outcome that you hope to achieve with Mosaic? Right, we're spending a lot of time and energy taking all these measurements. And what is really important to take those for is to firstly assess models and to find ways to improve how models represent the real world. And this is really about improving our predictive capability. We wanna know what's gonna happen in the future with climate change and what are those effects on weather, on uh, ecosystems and society. So with this information, we'll really be able to leap forward our ability to predict what's going to happen. Thank you so much. Fascinating and, and best of luck and, uh, and on your expedition. Appreciate it, thank you.